the potential that other people feel about Americans as being violent and explosive and aggressive that other cultures fear. Uh, that if we don't have some, I don't know how to say it. it, it's something to do with the role that therapy has in depoliticizing so that in a strange way it supports the state. We blame the Russian psychiatrists for calling people crazy who were, devi uh, what were they, uh, di dissidents. Yeah. But where are our, where, in what way does our psychological profession uh, support the state's view of things? Does it not also support the state's view of things? By, by saying the faults that make you ill are in your past. Well, what about those in the present? Hopwood says you wouldn't go against the state unless you were crazy. Well, that's, that's taking it directly. In the, I'd rather keep it still in the way it works indirectly. Uh, it's curious that the, the importance of family, one of the, the dominant myth of most therapeutic schools, is the same doctrine of Ronald Reagan and Dan Quayle, the importance of family. They also say the family is the most important thing. Now, they say it in a different way and all the rest, but they place us within that context. We value community. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean... Others, yeah. Okay, so what do they really mean when they say the family? Well, the family is the, is the guarantor of what they mean. What, who, the, the yeah, Republican right? No, they say that the family is the guarantor of, of morality and stability and uh, tradition. The what? Incubator. Incubator of traditional values. Where true education goes on and true, true, true learning. But I, I wait, can I, they don't support the family. Pardon? By the same token, they don't support the family. You mean? They give it lip service in that talk. Yeah, well, yeah, but we're talking lip service. We're only talking psychology. We're not talking about <laughs> 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 it's lip service. I, I, well, I, I, think, yeah. I think we're talking discrepancy. That yeah. Oh, sure. Place. So yes. Families don't but that's what they do. Now, yes. therefore, because families aren't doing that, the the uh, what you call incubators of traditional values, they're dysfunctional. So instead of starting with what families actually do, uh, we have the model of how they ought to be. Wait, I, I want to press yeah. this. Yeah. The cr criticism of the preoccupation with family, because. It, Instead of seeing it primarily as an obsession with what our parents did to us and mm -hmm. blaming them, couldn't you see it as a as a revolutionary work to not to not be doomed to become like your parents? Well, I don't know why I feel it's not important. I just do. <laughs> uh, I think this extraordinary narrowing of the of uh, what's called the human potential, <laughs> the extraordinary narrowing of struggling your life with what your parents were or weren't or what you should have been in regard to them. I mean, I am going to be just what my mother and father and what my ancestors and my genes and all the rest, but I got a lot of things to do. I can't be bothered with that I'm doing this because my mother did it that way or my father's energy went that way. I mean, it, it just seems to be, it seems to be an extraordinary uh, dis-derouting, uh, derouté, um, off the track. But isn't it up to become a traditional Jungian perspective? It's an what, what's that? archetype, I mean. Yeah. It's an archetype you're born with, almost. You're born with it. You are. You are. It. You are. You get older and you look in the mirror and you, you think, my God, that's my father. And you say something incredible and you find that's, you know, that's the way it worked. And then, so what? See, so what? I mean, think, in, for, for thousands of years we've had culture of people who had things to do besides work out whether they're going to be like their father or not. They had things to do. They're the strawberries. Aren't the strawberries more important?
than, than your relation to your mother and your father. Yes. What? Yes. You think so? Yeah. Maybe not. So, why don't we so my grandfather maybe abused me if my, my father was an alcoholic, my mother didn't do this. But I'm outraged at the fucking strawberries. I'm outraged at it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. But where do I go with it? Right. You know, I just feel... No, but at least at least you've made you've escaped the trap of being outraged with your father. Yeah, I mean that Which is useless. It's useless. Right. Whereas with at least something may be able to see but we've been told the passive aggressive attitude is what can I do about it? Because the child archetype is constellated by therapy. The child as long as therapy constellates the child archetype then you feel a victim and abused, and you can't do anything about it, and your sentence will be again and again, this thing's bigger than I am, what can I do about it? That's the voice of the child speaking. And the child doesn't vote. And the, and the child archetype dominates therapy today. Various schools, including the Jungian school. It did not dominate Jung himself. And in, if you see that film... Uh, the very first film with John Freeman where he interviews Jung back in 1958 or something and Jung, uh, the Freeman says to him uh, something about, well now what about your mother? And uh, Jung looks at him and he says, my mother? I mean, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know, what the hell are you, you know, what's all this? <laughs> what about those people though that are messing up the strawberries because they were raised by it's your because. It's your because. It's like the people who remember the Ku Klux Klan now, they're, many times they've come from their fathers who remember the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, and that, they being members of the Klan then have an effect on, on, on us, just like the strawberries. <coughs> Can you really separate the two? It's a yes. Place. Yes. I, I you could, he he walked away from it. But some people can't, and then they oh, start. I uh, walked away, but I'm still trapped. They're chained. They're trapped in prison fights, so, and then they act in society <laughs> and do things that. I got it. Lie. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Don't go on. Thank you. <laughs> but I still. Children and the psychology has to change beyond blaming your parents because there's no way. That you can unwork. Right. So then you're also suggesting then that there's an archetype of victimization, which which works on us, regardless of of how strong or how weak the actual abuse was, or or the. Yeah. And that's my point. Therapy constellates it, particularly today, and then to take it further, capitalizes on it and produces more and more weakness or depoliticized people. And my, my concern is that the white upper middle class, the, the most intelligent and educated people of the society for the last 30 years have been in therapy and not voting in, in a, to make it as broad as possible. They've been dealing with themselves and not dealing with the society. <laughs> yeah, I really doubt that. You doubt that. You think it's the same people who've been doing both? No, I, I doubt that as many influential people as you, you seem to be counting. Well, are really in therapy? Well, maybe they're not in therapy. Maybe they're maybe they're not in therapy. Okay. Well, let's say let's say that the therapeutic ideal has dominated the culture. If something comes up, you want to know right away, what is it with me? That's the therapeutic move. Now, that isn't necessarily the Texan move, but that's the therapeutic move. What is it with me? <laughs> Interiorization, yes. And that has to do with emotions, particularly. I'd have to elaborate that in regard to emotion, now, and that would take us a little while. I'm confused about yeah. what your critique is about. You, you know, you're picking on, on the, therapeutic, the therapeutic establishment. I see some good that it does. It yes. Maybe by some myths. No but, question. But you're shifting to you know the production of strawberries, and I don't know, I don't know where you're going. I don't know how they connect. Oh, that we are abused by the strawberries, and that is a more important focus at the moment since we've overvalued, I think, the, the, yeah. the being abused by the family. What you said before. Being abused by the family. Yes. 
The family is the only agents. That's who we deal with from day one. They transmit the culture. You deal with strawberries from day one. No, you deal with whether the parents bring the strawberries in the house from day one. <laughs> No, no, you've got another problem, which is, first of all, you've got an awful lot of people who don't have parents and so on, but, but who have straw, who still have a supermarket. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you're going. Well, I, I, where I'm going is very, very simple to me, that the therapeutic focus on, the chi on childhood, on your reductive approach to day one, you start day one with the parents. And that history is causality. I don't believe it. The present is made up of the moments of, 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 of the past. Of the the present is made up of the moments of the present. You, unless you leap over history and you go to the archetype. And then it's not in history and it's not in the genes. It's, it's, it's in fantasy, just as you've been yeah, saying. Yeah, it's in fantasy. And then we have to question, you know, what kind of operative what, uh, reality what, is that? What does it do for us to... to what, what are we getting? What are the goodies we get out of... In our belief, what does it do for us to believe so strongly in the in the power of early life? Pardon? Lets us off the hook. It's a form of absolution. Someone can take revenge on identify them as a whatever. It allows for an imaginal object to to blank. He did. I think it also keeps... You kind of do it with the government. I mean, you're, you're, yeah. You kind of critique us for, for um, families, but you kind of do it with the government. Well, I'm government actually trying to critique... Reagan or... Quayle, I'm like, trying to critique... Know. I set up the straw men, but I'm trying to critique the fact that we are, I feel, strongly depoliticized. And I feel that that's a connection between therapy and the therapeutic model which emphasizes childhood. See, I'm trying to see it's archetypally or structurally. Let me try to make it a little clearer. The more we emphasize the early years, the more we constellate the archetype of the child. And by constellating the archetype of the child, we constellate a whole series of pieces that go with it. The search for origins, the, uh, the uh, sense of abandonment and victimization because the child archetype Moses, uh, Jesus, uh, Hercules, so on and so forth. They're all abandoned and abused and Oedipus. So that goes with it. Uh, the feeling of powerlessness and at the same time an omnipotence fantasy of grandiosity. And that this is the, 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 the deeper structure that dominates, I believe, dominates therapy more and more. Whether it comes from Winnicott or whether it comes from Freud's early, you know, concern with the early years, or wherever it comes from, that's a dominant theme. It's not to deny that there is childhood or that childhood's important or anything. It's just what happens when the child archetype runs the therapeutic <coughs> world. I think it then produces depoliticized people. Now, even if the therapeutic world doesn't consist of just people in therapy, but is a dominant mode of our thinking <coughs> now, in the culture, that we think about our childhoods so much. We have From Alice Miller to I don't know whom. So then, if that is, if that, if that diagnosis is accurate, that the archetype of the child dominates therapy, then it seems to me it's the job of therapy to work on its own, uh, its own, uh, what fantasy is dominating. It needs to cure itself. That's, that's the job of therapy, to therapize its own theory. And otherwise it remains promoting more and more of the child archetype, which promotes more and more language of victimization and abuse and abandonment and, and rejection, you know, the, those syndromes that we all feel so terrible, being rejected, being abandoned, and so on. Of what if therapy began to re, re, reimagine itself? Uh, what would might it be? The, well, suppose suppose we were to imagine ourselves not as the product of a family or of the child archetype, but following Aristotle's sentence, man is by nature a political animal. We would imagine ourselves more as animals and more as political, that is, communal people.
that we are always in community in one sense or another. And then we might also reimagine uh, growth differently uh, in terms of the more and more the more and more one is in the political community in some way or another, or the more one's feeling becomes in the Adlerian sense of Gemeinschaftsgefühl of social feeling, then that would be the, the nature of growth. It wouldn't have the word journey in it. It would be uh, cohesion in some form or another. Less individualism. Because, again, just to finish, the child archetype is also the preform of the hero. And where the heroic model of, of Moses, Jesus, Oedipus, Hercules, so on, where that model dominates, the heroic model dominates, also the child form dominates. It has to 